Hey everyone, my name's Ed Ferris and I'm the conductor of the Pringle Wind Ensemble at Border Music Camp. Today, I want to talk to you about warm-ups for woodwind instruments. In a well-structured practice session, warm-ups are the part where we develop our technical skill on our instruments. This will allow us to play more challenging pieces that extend us as musicians. Think of it like this. If you went to soccer training and launched straight into playing a game, then you wouldn't get any better at playing soccer because you haven't developed the individual skills needed to play soccer really well, like kicking a ball, running, and eating oranges at half time. You'd also get sore because you haven't properly warmed up your muscles for the task at hand. Music is exactly the same, except now, you're holding a bassoon. bassoon to be able to play a woodwind instrument really well, there are three skills that you need to develop. Of course, there are other factors to playing music, like being able to read music and count rhythms, but we're going to warm up the three physical skills that are the building blocks of good woodwind playing. These skills are moving your air, your fingers, and your tongue. For this warm up, you will need your tuner a metronome, a copy of the cycle of fourths, and your instrument. Explosion. The cycle of fourths is an incredible tool to use in your practice sessions. There is so much theory and knowledge contained in this simple diagram. It will be useful for the rest of your musical careers. That's why I call it the circle of awesome. I can use the circle of fourths for figuring out chord progressions, the key signatures of my scales, my relative minors, tritone substitutions, the meaning of life itself. Anyway, it's pretty cool. First thing we are going to do is warm up our air. Air is the fuel that our instruments need to work. Being able to move the air really well through your instrument is the most important part of playing a woodwind instrument. Without good, consistent airstream, our tone and intonation will suffer. Tonguing will be harder and playing higher and lower on our instruments will be more difficult. For this exercise, we are going to start on concert B flat. Depending on what instrument you play, concert B flat might actually be called something different. For flutes, oboes and bassoons, your B flat is concert B flat. Clarinets and tenor saxophones start on C, and alto saxophones start on G. If you happen to play a brass instrument and you're watching this video, here are your starting notes. Or, you could just Google it. So, starting on your concert B-flat, we are going to play 8 beats of sound, followed by 4 beats of silence. Then we are going to go to the next note clockwise around the cycle and repeat the process. 8 beats sound, 4 beats silence, until we return to our concert B flat. I'm going to use my metronome to make sure I'm holding my notes for long enough and that I'm starting the notes cleanly after the silences. My metronome is set at 60 beats per minute. I'm also going to use my tuner to check the intonation of my instrument I'm going to make a mental note about any pitches that are really sharp or flat and try to correct these as I go. To use this air warm-up to help me improve, I need to be constantly evaluating my playing and striving for my best possible tone at all times. Once I can get through 8 beat notes comfortably on each pitch, I'm going to extend myself by playing one beat longer each day until I can make it all the way to 16 beats on each note. Now onto fingers. Moving our fingers smoothly and efficiently is a big part of playing a woodwind instrument. If we can't move our fingers precisely when going from note to note, then extra little slips and bumps will be heard in the music. The music will sound lumpy and inconsistent, like the soup. You don't want to sound like soup, do you? I'm going to play a one octave major scale starting on each pitch of the cycle of fourths. I start on B flat and then go clockwise to the next note. If you don't know how to play all of your scales just yet, 
that's okay. You can start with just the one you know and then gradually add one scale on either side of it each week. You can use Google to look up the notes in each scale, check in your method book or ask your teacher. It's going to be really important that I use a metronome for this warm-up so that I can hear that I'm landing on the beats accurately and that all of my movements in between each note are smooth and even. Because I want to hear if there are any accidental slips in any movements, I'm not going to use my tongue on these scales. I'm going to set my metronome at 60 beats per minute again, which should be a nice, comfortable speed. Oh, and did I mention you should use a metronome? Okay, now on to tongue. A lot of students I work with will tell me that they want to tongue faster. But when I hear them tongue one note over and over, they can do it really fast. The challenge comes when they try to coordinate moving their tongues and fingers at the same time. So, here is a little exercise that works on coordinating tongue, fingers, and air. Having a steady airflow is really important to tonguing. When you're starting out, don't try to play these notes really short. I know that they're marked with staccato dots underneath the notes, but just keep everything nice and long when you're starting out. Work your way clockwise around the cycle, playing the same pattern on each pitch. Oh, and use a metronome. There you have it. That's the whole warm-up focusing on our three main skills for woodwind playing. Moving air, fingers, and tongue. If you make this warm-up a regular way to start each practice session, I'm sure you will notice that your pieces become easier to play. As you progress, Move the metronome one or two clicks faster each day. You can also extend your scales to two or three octaves when you're comfortable. The whole warm-up takes about 10 minutes to do. I'd love to see you post a recording of your attempt to the Border Music Camp Facebook page. Happy practicing! Rocket clarinet! Hi everyone, hope you're doing well and enjoying this online border music camp. My name is James Earl and I've been a trumpet tutor at the camp for the last few years. So today I have a video for you about a different type of trumpet. Uh, it is this one here, which is a Baroque trumpet. Now this type of trumpet comes from the Baroque period and just to very, uh, just to very quickly talk about that period, uh, the Baroque era lasted from about 1600 through till roughly 1750. A few of the uh, major composers of that period are J.S. Bach, Handel, Purcell and Vivaldi. And some of the characteristics of Baroque music are long flowing melodies, use of ornamentation such as trills, and two or more melodies being played at the same time. So going back to uh, the trumpet, Let's have a look at it uh, compared to a modern trumpet. And as you can see, there are a number of differences. Um, uh, the modern trumpet is uh, significantly shorter than a Baroque trumpet. Um, Baroque trumpet does, doesn't have uh, any slides or anything like that. Uh, but perhaps uh, the most obvious uh, difference between the two is that a Baroque trumpet doesn't actually have any valves. Uh, that's because valves weren't uh, introduced, uh, or rather they, they weren't invented until the 1810s, so around about 60 years after the end of the Baroque period. What this instrument does have, however, are three vent holes, similar to what you would see on a recorder, for example. So these are here, so we have two on the top, and then we have one on the underside right there. Now, vent holes are a modern addition to uh, Baroque trumpets. Uh, they were introduced to help with tuning on some notes. Now, a real Baroque trumpet, shall we say, uh, an instrument that was made in the Baroque period, uh, didn't have any holes. It was just uh, a length of metal tubing that was uh, made into a formation similar to this. 
Now, another difference between the two is in the mouthpieces. Uh, so the Brock trumpet mouthpiece here, uh, you can see is just that little bit longer than a modern trumpet mouthpiece. And it is also uh, a little bit wider as well. As well as that, uh, we see here that there's quite a bit more decoration than what would be found on a modern trumpet mouthpiece. And this um, is a little bit similar to ornamentation on, uh, of Baroque music. It uh, uh, makes it a little bit more uh, fancy, shall we say. So the next uh, thing that I'd like to talk about about the Baroque trumpet is um, the uh, notes available to the instrument. Now, if you've ever listened to Baroque trumpet music, uh, you'll see, or rather you'll hear that uh, melodies are uh, quite often really, really high. Uh, and that's not just the composers uh, being silly and being mean to uh, trumpet players. There's a very good reason for this. And that's because uh, Baroque trumpets don't have, uh, they, they can't play the same amount of notes as a modern trumpet can. Uh, so to show you, uh, so from from C below the stave to C uh, in the stave, uh, we can only play uh, C, E, G, B flat, and C. So just to show you that. From that C above is, is when we can begin to play a scale. So because uh, a Baroque trumpet can only play uh, scales from that C and upwards, uh, that's why uh, Baroque trumpet is often played in high register uh, and it goes much, much, much higher than that, uh, some uh, music for a trumpet. So uh, now we have uh, the, these two uh, octaves or registers uh, have names. The bottom register, which is where you can only play an, an arpeggio basically, is called the principale register. And very often that is uh, played, music in that register is uh, a fanfare. And then uh, from C upwards is called the clarino register and that's a lot more floaty and uh, sweet uh, and very lyrical. So. And uh, so the, ne the next thing also is b because the trumpet has uh, so few notes uh, that it can play, so that the trumpet could play in different keys, uh, they have uh, what's called a crook. So it's this, this crook here is a C crook. So that allows me to play in C. And this crook here allows me to play in D. And there are other crooks as well, but most commonly uh, it is uh, C or D. So just to very quickly show this one. So a different pitch as you can, as you can hear. So that, that about wraps it up. Uh, for the information side of things. Uh, next is going to be a very short demonstration. I'm going to play uh, the first section of a piece by Handel. It's called The Trumpet Shell Sound. It's from uh, his, probably his most famous work, which I'm sure most, or a lot of you have heard of. It's called The Messiah. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy, and I hope this video has been informative and you've learned something about uh, the Baroque trumpet.